Hello, ladies. We are so glad that you are here. Original is a ministry of City First Church, and it's our hope and desire that every single time you tune in, you find pockets of encouragement, inspiration, fun, and truth that can only be found in Jesus. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you can stay updated with all things original. And make sure to download the original app because it's going to be full of resources, updates, merge, and all the ways that we at Original are impacting the world around us. And make sure to follow us on social media too. Now, get ready to lean in and take notes because we believe God has something special just for you. Each of us are on a journey. This road trip called life has twists and turns, scenic routes, roadblocks, detours, pit stops, and at moments, breathtaking views. So how do we wisely travel the path God has set out for each of us? In this brand new series, Road Trip, we will talk about the essential elements needed to navigate this adventure called life, no matter what the terrain looks like. So gather your friends, pack your favorite snacks, and let's learn together, Jesus leading the way. Well, hello friends, it's Jen here. I am so glad that you are here right now joining in with hundreds of other girls for our road trip study series. I'm so glad that you have decided to take this journey with us as we take time to learn and grow in our relationship with Jesus. Each of us are on a journey. This road trip called life has twists and turns, scenic routes, roadblocks, detours, pit stops, and at moments, breathtaking views. So how do we wisely travel the path that God has set out for each of us? In our times together, we are going to be discussing some essential elements that all of us need in order to navigate this adventure called life. This is what I am 100% sure of. The terrain of life looks different for each and every one of us. But when we gave our lives to Jesus, He gave us the Holy Spirit who is able to lead, guide, and direct us no matter what. No matter where you are at on your spiritual journey, these six weeks are for you. And I wanna encourage you to commit to journeying with us these next six weeks. I know, I know that life can get crazy and sometimes life gets full, but I know it is possible for each of us to keep coming back. And it is my prayer that God will speak to you powerfully in our times together. So I hope you've gathered a few of your girlfriends together and that you are ready for our road trip. Let's go. In life, there are two types of travelers. Those who like to fly where they're going, right? And those who love a good road trip. Personally, I like to fly. I'm all about getting somewhere fast. How many of you are with me? Then there are people like my good friend Liz who loves a good old fashioned road trip that piling into the car with some people, your people, some unhealthy snacks. I mean, every road trip needs beef jerky and Sour Patch Kids, right? You have a good playlist with all your favorite music, and of course, the most important, your travel plans all mapped out. On these road trips, as you are traveling to your destination, oftentimes you will come up on what is called a scenic overlook. These are spots where you are able to pull over, park your car, get out with a good stretch and meander over to the edge of the highway where all of a sudden you see a breathtaking view that usually stops you in your tracks and makes you go, wow, this is gorgeous. Look at this. I didn't even know this was here. And why? You didn't know the landscape and beauty existed because you were just driving by at 70 miles an hour trying to get to your destination. In order to actually see and experience the beauty that was there all along, you need to stop, to pause, so you can breathe and take it all in. Today's talk is about pausing, stopping for the scenic overlooks throughout your day, week, month, or even year. Yes, you heard me right. 
Today, I am talking about this idea of pausing in the middle of our hectic, full, busy, crazy, stressful lives so that we are able to see things we didn't even know existed. I know, I know, I am talking to a bunch of girls and women who are busy. We live full lives, all of us, single or married. We have work, friends, family, meal prep, grocery shops, soccer runs, doctor's appointments, exercise, church, prayer times, calendar, ah, I get it. We have all the things, no matter what stage of life you are in. And for most, not only are we busy, but we are often distracted even when we're not doing anything. We fill every waking moment, it seems, with something. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, the internet, news, emails, text messages. You know, on average, Americans check their phones 262 times a day. That's once every five and a half minutes. And in the middle of it all, guess what? We need to pause. Some of us are wondering where the beauty of life has gone. It's there. We just don't see it. I love this quote by Evelyn Underhill. She says this, For lack of attention, a thousand forms of loveliness elude us every day. How much do I miss because I'm just not looking? I'm distracted and busy, and you just might be too. There's a woman in the Bible who was distracted and busy. Luke chapter 10 verses 40 and 42 tells us this story. Let's go ahead and read it. It says this, As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him, meaning Jesus. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. So here is Martha, and she is distracted with all the things that need to be done. And Jesus, in the flesh, okay, was sitting in her living room. You know, we do the same thing. Jesus is available to us, but we are distracted oftentimes by all the places we're going and the things that need our attention. Now this is speculation, but I want you to think about it. What if Martha would have taken 10 minutes, just 10 minutes to sit with Jesus? What if she had taken the stew off the fire, wiped the sweat from her brow, and just sat with Jesus for 10 minutes? What would have happened? Maybe she would have been refreshed. Maybe she would have laughed. Maybe she would have learned something new about Jesus. Maybe she would have seen that serving the perfect meal wasn't the deal. Maybe she would have seen the moment a little bit differently. Just 10 minutes. This is what I know in my life. When I pause, my perspective shifts. In the Psalms, there is this word, Selah. We translate it as pause in the English. The word is found 74 times in the Psalms. That's a lot, all right? And here's an example. It's found in Psalm chapter three, verse four, and it says this. With my voice, I was crying to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy mountain. Selah, there's that word, right? Now, the Old Testament was originally written in Hebrew. So oftentimes the translation of Hebrew to English lacks a bit of what I would say the magnificence of the meaning. Now the root word of Selah means to cast up and another meaning is highway. So a word picture here could be Selah, building a road higher than the adjacent terrain. When we pause, we have a perspective changed. 
we build a road higher than what we normally see, a scenic outlook, right? How incredible is that? When I have been worried, upset, distracted, or anxious, and I have taken a moment to pause in the middle of it, the way I see things has shifted. You know, being super practical here, how do we pause even in the middle of all of the things that we have to get done? Well, here's a few things. Maybe put down your phone even for five minutes. Turn off your phone for a couple of hours. Maybe eat a healthy meal. Sit down for 10 minutes in silence. Doesn't that sound amazing? <laughs> Stop to laugh. Take some deep breaths. You know, here's a little science here. When you take a deep breath in, your heart rate quickens slightly. And as you exhale, your heart rate slows. Repeated deep breaths will naturally bring your heart rate more in sync with your breath. This leads your brain to release endorphins, which are chemicals that have a natural calming effect. You know, God made you like that. God made you like that. How amazing. Take some deep breaths for a Selah. You know, God made us to pause. Even Jesus paused. He set an example for us. In Luke chapter 5, verses 15 and 16, in the Amplified, it says this, But the news about him was spreading farther, and large crowds kept gathering to hear him and to be healed of their illnesses. But Jesus himself would often slip away to the wilderness and pray in seclusion. Jesus paused for prayer. I want you to see this. Even with pressure mounting, right? Word spreading and large crowds gathering, the scripture says. He paused. He slipped away. Not forever, right? But he slipped away nonetheless. Listen, you don't need to slip away for a long vacation to pray. You don't need to go to Hawaii, although that would be really nice, right? Jesus slipped away to pray, and then he came back. You can too. Take five minutes, ten minutes. Pause to be with Jesus. Pause to pray. Talk to God. You know, in Matthew 26, when Jesus is about to go to the cross, he goes to a garden to pray. And these moments of prayer give the Son of God the strength and perspective to accomplish what God the Father had called him to do. Jesus' mission was to die for me and for you. Listen, Jesus had a mission, but we have one too. What is your mission? What has Jesus called you to do? Love your neighbor? Maybe be a lawyer, help the poor, be a barista, go to school, parent your children. I don't know what God has called you to do, but slipping away to pray can help you gain the strength and perspective you will need as you hop back into your car and continue your journey. Pausing to pray is necessary and it's available to us. You know, Jesus also paused for people you see it time and time again that Jesus paused for people, the woman at the well, blind Bartimaeus, the woman with the issue of blood, Jairus, the widow of Nain, Peter's mother-in-law, the Roman centurion whose servant was ill, the man whose friends lowered him through the roof, the 12 lepers. Jesus, he ate meals with prostitutes, tax collectors, and other disreputable sinners. Jesus paused for people, and we are called to pause for people. The lady at the checkout who needs a smile and a kind word. Your child who needs help with something you've helped with a thousand times already. The coworker who needs some encouragement. Your spouse who needs affirmation, maybe, or gratitude. Your neighbor who needs their leaves raked. We can all pause. You know, loving Jesus will always be connected to loving people. You cannot separate the two. You just can't. The last thing, Jesus also paused for praise. So he paused to pray. He paused for people and he paused for praise. Matthew chapter 26, verse 30 says this. They sang a hymn and went directly to Mount Olives. Okay. Now listen, let me explain this because I know that's a really short verse and it may seem odd um, for this point, but first of all, hymn didn't mean our kind of hymn. They probably would have sung one of the Psalms from scripture, the Old Testament. Second, the power of this verse becomes clear when we look at where it is situated. It is actually in between the Last Supper and the Garden of Gethsemane. 
You know, when I was studying this passage, I had never noticed this before. As Jesus is headed to the cross, he washes his disciples' feet, he serves the Last Supper, and then they pause and sing a hymn. And then they go to the garden where Jesus paused to pray before going to the cross. I mean, come on somebody. So as Jesus is preparing to head to the cross to die for me and you, he pauses to praise. This is powerful, you guys. May his example not be lost on us. I don't know what the terrain of your life looks like right now. Maybe things are difficult. Maybe you are facing a hardship. Maybe things are going great. But no matter what, we can all pause to praise God in the middle of it. And even though Jesus' circumstances didn't shift, listen, he still went to the cross, right? I can guarantee you that praise was a part of the power he had to fulfill his calling. I'm convinced that Jesus understood the power of Selah, the power of pause, building a road higher than the adjacent terrain. Girls, we have the power to pause. We really do. In the middle of the crazy, the busy, the full, the frustrating. Can we pause for prayer, pause for people, and pause for praise? These things will help us build a road higher than the adjacent terrain. It will give us a true scenic outlook of our life just when we need it. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much, God, that you gave us this principle of Selah, God, and that when we actually take the moments, or God, to pause and pray, and then pause for people and pause to praise God, you, you by the power of your Holy Spirit, give us the ability to see things a little bit different. You give us a scenic outlook. And so I pray that you would, in these next few moments, be with us as we discuss how to look for the scenic outlooks in our life. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. We are so thankful that you are a part of this amazing movement of women who are simply letting Jesus lead the way and choosing to live life to the fullest. We hope that you enjoyed this video and feel empowered to live original. Remember to hit the subscribe button, download our app, and follow us on social media. We will see you next time.